everybody. Welcome on into episode seven of the Skycast. I know there was a lot of a lot of publicity earlier this week about a preview for an episode seven, but you can see it an entire episode seven right here on the Big Sky Conference YouTube channel. I'm John Oglesby, Jason Ashcraft, Brad Wall, and we're happy to welcome you on into another episode of the Skycast. Here, big weekend last weekend across the Big Sky Conference, all sports conference races getting hot as the weather gets colder. We're going to start first to what happened on the pitch with women's soccer. Absolutely. This, you know, Major League Soccer is this is their last mm -hmm. regular season yep. uh, weekend and they're decide they're calling it um, decision day. Yeah. This weekend in women's soccer could be decision day mm -hmm. because the top 3 teams, Idaho, Northern Colorado, and Eastern Washington all play each other this weekend. We've set up, if you look at this week's notes, we've kind of laid out some of the possible clinching scenarios. If Idaho wins two games, they win the regular season championship. So it's going to be a really exciting weekend. I know we'll preview it a little bit more, but looking at last week, I mean, the top three teams had a good weekend. Idaho, of course, is now, um, I believe, it's seven straight wins mm -hmm. in the conference uh, with wins over Southern Utah and Northern Arizona, they scored four goals in each game um, and it earned two of their players uh, player of the week. We had uh, forward Olivia Beggerly uh, getting a co-offensive player of the week and uh, our defensive player of the week was Kelly Dokey. I'm sorry if I butchered your names, ladies. <laughs> um, they, they had great weekends uh, for the Vandals. But Northern Colorado, don't count them out as well. No. They're just one game separating Idaho, Northern Colorado in the standings. UNC picked up two wins over Sacramento State and Portland State. Also, Weber State has been coming on strong lately. Three straight wins. Uh, they picked up a win this weekend over Montana in a 1 0 uh, shutout. Northern Colorado's uh, Mario Gutierrez picked up her first career Offensive okay. Player of the Week uh, for her performances this weekend. So, really good weekend. We'll talk more in the preview about it because this is our first fall sport, team sport that actually ends and um, it's going to be really exciting. Now, Jason, real quick before we move on, lay out the teams right now mm -hmm. who've got a chance to still win that regular season title and host the tournament. The teams that have a chance to win the regular season title are Idaho, Northern Colorado, and Eastern Washington. Okay. Everybody except Idaho State, unfortunately they've been eliminated from tournament contention. Everybody else has the opportunity to either make the tournament or not make the tournament. Okay. Well, pretty much. There's a few that might still clinch this weekend. Yeah. But it's a really tight race is what I'm getting at. So, so it should be a lot of fun. We'll get a preview of that coming up in our second segment of the show today. Brad, what uh, happened this weekend on the hardwood? So uh, really, really big week. Um, you kind of have a number of things happening. You got teams fighting for hosting rights, potentially. Team teams fighting for better seating purposes. Um, and kind of the big one of the weekend, Northern Arizona hosted Idaho State. Um, both Eastern Washington and Idaho State were 7-0 and going into okay. Saturday. Uh, Northern Arizona knocks off Idaho State, hands them their first loss. So, so now you got Northern Arizona and Idaho State both 7-1 and atop the South Division. And then Eastern Washington, they go into Missoula and fall to the Grizzlies in five sets. Wow. Now, now I kind of, I've kind of said it this season, Montana was a team that was 0-7 going into that match, taking on a 7-0 team. Um, you kind of expect a little, you know, Eastern to just run through them, but Montana's a good volleyball team despite their record. You have a good battle. It didn't have the feel of an 0-7, 7-0 yeah. yeah, match. It was, it was a great, great match for sure. And then you got Idaho and Sacramento State. They both put together 2-0 weeks. They're both 5-3 now. Um, Kind of making a big case right now to, to get up those standings and, and make a move on those seven and one teams. So, and then uh, Northern Colorado, North Dakota, and Southern Utah all four and four. So, okay. man, that, that top eight is really shaping up to yeah. be a good one in these coming weeks. No doubt about that. Should uh, remain definitely exciting in volleyball. Again, we'll hear a preview of what's coming up this weekend in volleyball a little bit later in the show. Oh, whoops. I, uh, oh, yeah, don't forget about, forget about Janae here. Yeah, yeah the players of the week. I Come on. I get <laughs> Vanderplug. So, Janae Vanderplug, I mean, it's kind of a theme where our player of the week are coming, coming out of some of the biggest matches mm -hmm. each weekend, and that was no difference this weekend. Janae Vanderplug, um, kind of a you know, if, I, if, if it was my guess at this halfway point of the season, one of the front runners 
potentially for the MVP award, you know, along with uh, Kit Lauren Kitzel for yeah. Sac State, and you know, there's a couple other ladies making a case for that as well. But uh, Vander Plug, she had 41 kills, 20 digs over the weekend. Um, really just showed up for that match against Idaho State. 24 kills, just one hitting error, uh, four, 469 hitting percentage, 12 digs. I mean, that's that's just a big time performance right there, coming going against a strong Idaho State team that, you know, they hadn't. You know, that's their third loss in in, in two years. So. Big ups to, to Vanderplug and the Lumberjacks for that. Absolutely. All right. What happened in uh, cross country this past weekend, Brad? So, so really, really big weekend in cross country. We had te most of the teams competing their last meet before the big skies. Um, there's the pre-nationals in Louisville. We had a, a chunk of teams there. Uh, Eastern Washington, Sarah Ryder, she was 16th overall in the, in the red section, which is the biggest, biggest section there. So really phenomenal performance from Sarah. And then Mike Tate for Southern Utah was the top Big Sky finisher for Southern Utah, uh, 33rd. And uh, I mean, the Big Sky women there were really strong. McKenna Morley, freshman from Montana, she was 39th. Um, only her second race in her career, she's been out for a little bit with an injury. And then uh, Haley Wetton, Jamie Stokes for Weber State, 42nd and 43rd. So like a good, well-rounded performance by, by our Big Sky women at that meet. And then uh, at the Adidas invite, Melanie Townsend and Corey Glines both leading Northern Arizona again. Uh, Glines was 38th in the men's race and Townsend 39th. Um, I mean, pre-nationals was a big field, but yeah. but uh, huge, huge, huge fields at, at the Adidas invite. Lots of ranked teams, lots of All-Americans at both meets. And then at the Santa Clara Bronco invite, the big sky, this was kind of cool. Top two finishers on the on the women's side. Uh, you had Chloe Burleyu winning again. I mean, she, yeah, she had she's had a season, season where yeah, she has. if she gets third, it's you know kind of a down weekend for her. <laughs> so she's either winning or being the runner up. Or what a what a season for Chloe. And then Idaho's Kinsey Gomez yep. was right behind her, two seconds behind, mm -hmm. both breaking t 20 minutes for for a 6K. I mean, that's that's pretty dang good. That's, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's an accomplishment. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, some other small highlights, uh, North Dakota's Drew Campbell, uh, he got the individual victory at their home meet. And then uh, Amanda Bowman for Portland State, um, winning her sec second straight individual title and second straight team title for the Vikings as well at the Emerald City Open. So Okay. That's kind of that's kind of the uh, finale going up to the Big Sky Championships in Cedar City. So. Yeah, we'll preview that coming up uh, next week, and then we'll be there live uh, next weekend with some great video content. So we're looking forward to that. Um, what happened in golf this past weekend, guys? Uh, first off, men's golfer from Southern Utah, Fidel Concepcion. He wins a great tournament down in Southern California, hosted by Cal State Northridge. Really good field full of a lot of Big West schools. He wins and picks up the medalist there. He's your Big Sky Men's Golfer of the Week. Your Big Sky Women's Golfer of the Week, North Dakota's Jenna Young. Once again, getting a high finish in a tournament that was held in the Midwest, hosted by Creighton. She's a freshman again for North Dakota. There's a lot of Big Sky teams that are currently in action at a tournament over in Hawaii, so expect to see some good results from them. Uh, Sacramento State already faring very well in that tournament, so be excited to see how they stack up for next week's Big Sky Player of the Week. But the fall golf season, just about a week from being over, there's some men's teams in action and a tournament this weekend. But a couple weeks and we're pretty much going to be wrapped up with golf, both men's and women's for the fall. So should be excited to see how that plays out. Remember to stay tuned to BigSkyConf.com as well as at BigSkyConf on Twitter for all the updates on what's happening in men's and women's golf. All right, fellas, let's get in to the gridiron. Big Sky football. Big weekend last weekend for the Big Sky Conference. Absolutely. Portland State, we're going to start out. Bruce Barnum gets a contract, and the Vikings get a big victory, 59-42, over Montana State. David Jones, who's your Big Sky Root Sports Offensive Player of the Week, 285 yards rushing, massive performance all game long. The Vikings ran the ball at will. They pick up a big victory. They are rapidly moving up to the polls. They're up to 13th in the nation as Portland State, once again, a big 59-42 victory over Montana State. Northern Colorado, 
56-27 victory over UC Davis. The Bears with a 42 to nothing lead at one point in the second quarter. We talked about it all season long. This is a team that appears to be starting to find a groove. Northern Colorado showing it in a big way with a win over UC Davis. Then another score, Eastern Washington, 45-28 victory over Idaho State. Cooper Cup, don't want to call him Superman. That might be high expectations, but he did what I mean, this is this is incredible, right? He scores a touchdown as a receiver, two touchdowns as a receiver. Has a punt return touchdown. He's your root sports special teams player of the week. And then throws a touchdown on a reverse halfback pass play to Jordan West for a touchdown. I mean, that's it's pretty just tough. A little bit of versatility there. He I mean, just can go in and kick the extra point or <laughs> go on defense and get a pick six. I mean, he couldn't, have, he couldn't have done any more for the Eagles if he'd have sold a couple boxes of popcorn and autographed everybody's <laughs> program. So, I mean, that was, it was that type of performance for Cooper Cup. Again, he's your root sport special teams player of the week as Eastern Washington gets a win over Idaho State. Southern Utah, 44 to nothing, three games. The T-Birds have allowed three conference points. Absolutely. And scored 118. Right? Yeah, yeah. So they're That's doing impressive. really well. It was interesting, obviously, some shakeup with the Southern Utah offensive staff. Their quarterback's coach, Justin Walterscheid, steps in as the new OC. Ammon Olsen over 400 yards, five touchdown passes as the T-Birds get a big victory, 44 to nothing, over Sacramento State. And then Weber State, the Cardiac Cats. The Cats come back, pick up a 25-24 victory over North Dakota. Emma Tella, Weber State linebackers, your root sports defensive player of the week. Weber State trailing 24-10 early in that fourth quarter. Tella, first the Wildcats get a score. Then Tella's able to force a fumble. It looked like he was going to scoop and score. However, he tripped on the 10-yard line with his body momentum. Wildcats ended up scoring, and then Tella with a game-saving interception. Weber State at 3-1 and one in league play. Don't overlook them right now. Absolutely not. I mean, you know, this was a good win to get. Shows that you can win in the clutch, and uh, I believe the weather was not it was a little, great. It was a little, a little wet on Saturday. Yeah, I was there. It's a little inclement. Uh, you know, hats off to Weber State to, to pull it out in the end like that. Big 25-24 victory at home over a good football team. Mm -hmm. Very good football team in North Dakota. So that's what's happening this week in the Big Sky, or what happened last week, rather, in the Big Sky Conference. We're going to take a short break, then we'll come back. We'll break down what's coming up on Olympic sports. Stay with us. You're watching the SkyCast. the SkyCast, everybody. I'm John Ogles. We have the Big Sky Communication staff joined by the Aces of Spades, Jason Ashcraft and Brad Wall. We're going to take a look at what's coming up this next weekend in Olympic sports. And man, this is this is a great time of year. For Absolutely. These. Yeah, everything is, is winding down. Yep. Um, we've got cross country will be having their championship mm -hmm. next week. The following week or two after that we'll have soccer yep. then right before or right, right before, before thanksgiving season. we'll have volleyball so this is really the, the busy time of year and then very soon football will be wrapping yeah, up we got as well. football playoffs coming yeah out football playoffs months, so. yeah so it's it's really exciting around here in the office um we'll start off with soccer as i said before this is decision weekend for yep. some teams eastern washington idaho and northern colorado all play each other let's preview that real quick Idaho will get their weekend started off at North Dakota, and that game is at 2 p.m. You can watch that one on North Dakota's website, uh, undsports.com. Portland State will, will travel to Montana for a 3 p.m. mountain kick. Idaho State will travel to Northern Arizona, that's 6 p.m. Uh, kick there. Eastern Washington and Northern Colorado, the battle of the number two, number two and number three team in the standings, takes place Friday, 6 p.m. in Greeley. You can watch that on WatchBigSky.com. And Weber State will travel down to Southern Utah at 4 p.m. Mountain. Um, you can also watch that on Watch Big Sky. And here's where we really it really gets interesting. On Sunday, Weber State goes to Northern Arizona. Idaho and Northern Colorado, 1 p.m. in Greeley on WatchBigSky.com. The standings are like this. Idaho is 7-0 with 21 points. Northern Colorado is 6-1 with 18 points. 
Eastern Washington is 5-2 and two with 15 points. If Eastern Washington wins their last three games, all of them have three games left to play, then Eastern Washington will have beaten Idaho and Northern Colorado. They will have the tiebreaker, and they will be your regular season champion. Northern Colorado has to win two out of three. It helps if they beat Idaho. They need to beat Idaho. And then Idaho, if they sweep this weekend, they will have uh, beaten Northern Colorado with a game at Eastern Washington mm -hmm. to end out the season. So if Idaho goes 2-0 this weekend, then they clinch the regular season championship. Here's the thing, though. Ties will throw that all in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all oh, yeah. out, of, out of whack. So wins and losses are what these teams are going to be looking for. Obviously, go to our weekend viewing guide where you can check out where to watch all these games. It is going to be an exciting weekend of soccer for the Big Sky. Awesome. Brad, what's coming up this weekend of volleyball? So, yeah, so we're just getting over that halfway hump, but uh, like I said, a lot, of, a lot of different trends going on right now. you got Eastern Washington, Idaho State, and Northern Arizona trying to make a case to host the tournament. you got Idaho, Sacramento State kind of in that four and five position, mm -hmm. and then North Dakota, Northern Colorado, Southern Utah, all four and four at the six, seven, eight. Yep. And then Montana, Montana State, Portland State, and Weber State all kind of on the outside looking in but have a chance to pick up steam and, and, and chase some of those teams. So, the, the, I mean, the big game tonight, Thursday night, uh, Eastern Washington faces Idaho State. Yep. So there you so go, do. two seven and one teams. They were undefeated as of, like, as of a week ago. Mm -hmm. now, they're, now you're looking to avoid your second straight loss. And eight and one right now, when you're fighting for a possible hosting right, yep. it's not a lot better than seven and two. So. That's a that's a key one to tune into. And your your first tiebreaker is wins against the team you're tied with. So yep. your record head against that yeah head to head record. So we're getting to the time of year where a lot of looking at the schedule, a lot of these teams will be playing for that crucial tiebreaker as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and when you and when you look at that that four and four group, the North Dakota, Northern Colorado, Southern Utah, they kind of meet each other this weekend. So North yeah, Dakota yeah. takes on NAU, Northern Colorado at Southern Utah Thursday. And then they swap Northern Colorado, Northern Arizona, North Dakota at Southern Utah. That's a big chance for the you know the Bears and the Thunderbirds and the and well I guess they don't have a mascot in North Dakota. <laughs> <laughs> so pick up some pick up some ground there, go over five hundred, make a case possibly for a six or five seed. And then uh, Idaho, they're they're coming over to be in Ogden tonight. Yep. And then. Uh, Heading over to Pocatello Saturday. Um, Idaho's a team that's kind of picking up steam. They're five and three. They've mm -hmm. won four straight. Three of those have came in five set thrillers. So they're finding they're finding a way to win these games and really really picking up steam. And you know they could possibly make a case to chase one of those seven and one teams, gain ground on them. Idaho was one of those teams that was in the running almost all of last season too. Mm -hmm. And and you know teams always step their game up against their rivals. Absolutely. So, uh, Saturday's matchup up in Pocatello between the Bengals and the Vandals should be huge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I don't. I mean, you look at Eastern Washington seven one, Idaho five and three. Those are the top two teams in the North Division. Mm -hmm. If Eastern loses a couple, Idaho can shoot right up and, and grab that top spot in the yeah. North Division. So you know that'd be huge for the Vandals. And then uh, Montana State, Sacramento State, Montana Portland State, and then Montana at Sacramento State, Montana State at Portland State, uh, Sacramento State. Team similar to Idaho, they're five and three. They kind of look like the early front runners, but have dropped a couple. But they they pick it up. They go two and zero last mm -hmm. week. Now they're kind of looking to gain ground on Idaho State and NAU in that South Division. So um, you know, Portland State, Montana, Montana State, Weber State, still got a shot. I mean, it's not that's not the thing. Sorry, no yeah. one's no yeah. one's clinched. No one's clinched a tournament spot. No one's been eliminated. So. Yeah, and there's it's still, all it's all mathematically possible <laughs> for everybody right and now. And there's still a lot of volleyball to be played, so you never know. One of those teams that might be at the bottom of the standings this week, by the time it's all said and done, they could have worked themselves up into a mm -hmm. pretty good seat. The Big Sky volleyball has been so competitive this season. You'll have a three you'll have a three zero sweep where it's just this close from going yeah. the other way. Yeah. Or you have a five set game that is just 
you know, something you'd want to see in a championship. Yeah. Just a huge battle, so you never know what you're going to get. Absolutely. Should be a fun weekend. Again, remember, tune to the weekend viewing guide on the Big Sky Conference website for a complete breakdown of that. Fellas, we're going to take one more break. We're going to come back, final segment of the show, give you your preview of what's coming up this weekend in Big Sky football. That and more, it's coming up when we return on the SkyCast. everybody we are final segment of the skycast this week i'm john oglesby alongside jason ashcraft brad wall uh we did have a special segment planned this week but we're unfortunately unable to do it <laughs> we're going to have our first edition of the casper's corner uh john casper who's on the big sky staff formerly the assistant commissioner over media relations he's now over championships we're going to get some kind of throwback classic yeah. moments as we get ready for the championships unfortunately john unable to make it for the taping today so <laughs> no words of wisdom coming from no. him no so we'll have to we'll have to wait for next week on that but be looking in the coming weeks for uh casper's corn <laughs> we can tag uh, him on here yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right we're going to focus on big sky football here in our final segment of the show some great matchups coming up this weekend of football the thing about football fellas there's so much it's interesting. Parity is the story in every sport, but in football especially, you've got Eastern Washington and Southern Utah that are at three and zero. You got Weber State at three and one, and then at two and one, you've got Portland State and Montana. And then don't count Northern Colorado, North Dakota, or Montana State out at two and two just yet. So, so many variables in that right there. We're going to start with a preview of a game coming up this weekend between Montana and North Dakota. It's your root sports game of the week as Root Sports, your official television partner of the Big Sky Conference. one thirty Mountain Time kickoff on that game. Root Sports as well as DirecTV's Audience Network. Grays coming off a bye. UND with that heartbreaking loss up at Weber State last weekend. So this is a game both of these teams have got to have. Expect to see some defense in this one. Again, one thirty start time on Root Sports as well as DirecTV's Audience Network. one thirty five Eastern Washington and Northern Colorado. Again, the Bears Bit of a surprising upstart. I don't think a lot of people expected this from them. They sit at 4-2, and 2-2 two, two and two in the league, hosting Eastern Washington. This is a big game for both teams. Absolutely. And um, for Northern Colorado, it's a chance to prove yourself against one of the better teams in the conference. Yeah, yeah. And they're having a, a very good year, mm -hmm. as you said. And uh, for Eastern Washington, they need to come to play. Northern Colorado's got a lot to play for it. Absolutely. So it should be a fun one. One thirty-five kickoff mountain time on that game. You can find that on WatchBigSky.com. East Tennessee State at Montana State. If you were wondering, that is a non-conference game. Uh, <laughs> Two thirty-five mountain time kickoff on that game. You can find it on Altitude outside of Montana, Cal's Media inside Montana, and then on MSU Bobcats.com. East Tennessee State. So they were a program. Had a football program in the Southern Conference up to about 2,000. Dropped football. Yeah. Now they've started again. And the Buccaneers, the mighty Buccos, about to head on into Bozeman. Yeah. See what happens. So we want to welcome them back to, yeah. to football. Um, I actually know some folks that work in East Tennessee okay. State there. And that was my neck of the woods for a long time. Um, you know, welcome back. We're, we're glad to see you. And, you know, be prepared for for the Bobcats because, as we know, they can really put up a lot of points. Especially in Bozeman, yeah. yeah. So welcome back, and I'm sure Dakota Prukop will have a nice uh, thank you card signed for them in the form of a big day. That's what I'm <laughs> expecting for them. Uh, again, 2.35 kickoff time on msubobcats.com, Cal's and Altitude. Southern Utah, UC Davis. Again, the T-Birds 3-0, UC Davis Coming into this game, 1-3 in the league. They had a tough loss last weekend in Northern Colorado. 4 p.m. Pacific time kickoff. You can find that game on WatchBigSky.com. You know, it's interesting, fellas. We're going to be doing a um, kind of a feature story uh, profile on both Southern Utah and Portland State's defenses, how well they've played to this point in the season in a couple weeks, coming up on the Big Sky Conference YouTube channel. And this is another chance for the Thunderbirds. I mean, you win this game, you're at 4-0 in the league. A lot of opportunities start to open. Absolutely. Just win, baby. That's, Just, that's what they say. <laughs> 
just win, baby. And that's what the Thunderbirds will try and do. Four o'clock Pacific time kickoff as they face off against the UC Davis Aggies on Saturday on WatchBigSky.com. Weber State at Northern Arizona. Big game for these two teams once again. Uh, Weber State last year, Northern Arizona entered. They came to Ogden with playoff opportunities, eked out a close win, and kind of faltered down the end of the season. But this is a big game for the Lumberjacks to try and stay relevant as they're at one and two in the league. Weber State, if the Wildcats get a victory here, now you're at four and one in the league. You go into a game next weekend on Root Sports against Eastern Washington. Man, that's, there's a lot of things that the Cats can make interesting it's here. It's a little bit of role reversal from last yep. year, how Northern Arizona came up to Ogden with playoff implications. Yep. It's the shoes on the other foot now. The Wildcats have to go down to Flagstaff or up, depending on the altitude. Um, and, you know, and now they have playoff implications. Because if they go to 4-1, and one, you're in an opportunity there to really make a case that you should be in the FCS playoff. Absolutely. Fun fact here for Weber State fans, this is the latest in the year that Weber State has had a winning record since the Wildcats finished the 2010 season, 6 of 5. Latest in the year the Wildcats have had a winning record, so fun fact to throw out there for everybody who's found that as I was doing some research for this week's football notes. That game will be on Fox Sports Arizona. Our good friend Mitch Stroman, Kevin Stevens, they'll be on the call for that game down in Flagstaff. Four o'clock Arizona time kickoff, five o'clock Mountain time for you kids watching at home. It'll be on Fox Sports Arizona as well as WatchBigSky.com. Idaho State at Sacramento State, two teams near kind of the bottom of the standings right now, but should be an exciting game. We know Idaho State can score points, and we know Sacramento State can play defense, so it'll be interesting to see what happens there. 6.05 Pacific time kickoff on WatchPigSky.com, that game in Sacramento. And then the nightcap, Barney Ball taking his act on the road down to face former Portland State coach Tim Walsh and Cal Pauly. I'm interested to see how this game plays out. you got such a prolific – Two, two offenses that are really good at running the football. Obviously, Cal Poly leads the nation in running the football. I'm excited to see if Portland State's defense can continue to answer the bell. We've seen Cal Poly put together some really good games. Yep. Um, and don't count out Cal Poly's defense. No, They're not a very at all. stout defensive unit. This is, this is going to be a very fun game to watch. If, if get online, go to watchbigsky.com. Make sure you watch this one. Big implications. And Cal Poly. They're one and two. They're they're a pretty dang good one and two. Yeah, if yeah. You ask me. Yeah, our friend Craig Haley with stats always says how Cal Poly is probably one of the best. Their overall record two and four. They're probably the best two and four team yeah. in the country. So, got to look out for Cal Poly again. That'll be a fun one. Saturday night, nightcap Saturday night football edition in the Big Sky Conference six oh five. That game on watch. BigSky.com. One more reminder, your Root Sports Game of the Week is Root Sports, the official television partner of the Big Sky Conference. That game, North Dakota at Montana from Washington Grizzly Stadium in Missoula. It'll be a 1.30 start time on the broadcast as UND travels to take on the Grizz. Both of them trying to stay relevant in the Big Sky Conference race. Should be a fun one up in Missoula. Missoula. Fellas, any final shots? No, just be sure to go to WatchBigSky.com. It is chock full of some great matchups this weekend in all of our small sports. We'll do everything we can to keep you updated. Stay up with us on our Twitter as well as Facebook and Instagram pages throughout the weekend. Fellas, great show as always. I, I know there were a lot of people that were kind of wondering what the entire Episode 7, how it was going to play out. I think this one played out pretty I, well. Yeah, you know, I, I think the hype wasn't enough yeah i think it right the, the pre previews kind of undersold it. yeah so we may have a new director uh for episode eight but we'll let you know <laughs> on that uh thanks so much for joining us everybody i'm john oglesby jason ashcraft brad wall and thanks so much for watching this week's edition of the skycast